Let's look at this infinite sum, double infinite sum. First, we hold m constant and we let n go from 1 to infinity. Of course, n not equal m, right, make it meaningful. And so then we let m go from 1 to infinity. So first, I'm going to just rewrite the inside into, for it's a difference of, difference of perfect square, right? So it's m minus n multiplied by m plus n, right? Then we can split, split them up. I'm going to multiply by some constant in front. We'll determine that later. Right? I'm going to write some constant over m minus n plus some other constant over m plus n. So what if we write 1 and 1? Then we can say m plus n plus m minus n. That's 2m, right? So we just have to multiply by 1 over 2m. Right now, the inside infinite sum. Right? n go from 1 to infinity. n not equal m of 1 over m squared minus n squared is equal to first. Like I said, I'm going to treat m as constant. Right? Take out the constant. 1 over 2m. Right? Then we can sigma. sigma. We have split of the sigmas. Right? Two sums. And first sum, let's say, uh, n, go. n goes from 1 to infinity. n not equal m of uh, 1 over n minus n, right? My second sum is what? Second sum, n goes from 1 from to infinity, n not equal to n, of 1 over n plus n, right? Now my purpose is to somehow re-index this one, right? To make it the same form as this form. Right? Maybe I can have some extra a few terms out here, but I can then isolate them out, right? <clears throat> Maybe there's a negative sign or something. Then I can cancel out with this term, right? At least the majority of the terms can be canceled out. So that is my overall plan. Now, maybe I can treat, uh, denote this is my sigma one, and this is my sigma two, right? So first we notice this fact that for sigma two, there's no such term as 1 over 2m, right? Because we require n not equal m, right? So 1 over 2m. This term doesn't, does not appear. Now, for this sum, I'm going to re-index this sum. So sigma 1. Sigma 1. Sigma 1 equal. Now, if I change m minus n into m plus m, right? so m plus n, of course, I have to re-index it. Right? So remember, first I start from 1. right? So I start from m minus 1. Right? So for I have to... Maybe I have to... Uh, take out the negative sign first, right? Because I have a minus n plus n, right? To make it sure I have a plus n, I have to take out the negative sign. So negative of n goes from 1 to infinity. n doesn't equal m. Of 1 over n minus m. Right? Now, if I just, like I said, if I just change the inside into n plus m. Remember, I, I start from 1 minus m. Right? So if I change it into this, what do I have? where do I have to start? I think it's 1 minus twice of m right? to infinity. So then I can have one minus one minus m. So right now, I do have the same form as this one, right? 
except I have different indexes, different and diff same ending point, different starting point. Right? I started off earlier than this guy. Right? This guy starts only from one, but now I start from some negative numbers. Right? Maybe I treat m as five. Right? Two times five, ten. One minus ten, negative nine. All right? I start from negative nine, right? way earlier than this guy. So. I can just split it up into two parts. Right? Negative of. Maybe I can say this time I want to start from uh, 1 minus 2m to infinity to 0 this time, right? Then I can. Then I can start. So n doesn't equal n. Of course, I have to require n doesn't equal negative m, right? So that it's still meaningful. Doesn't equal negative m. Right? Then I can go from one to infinity. Because here I go from one to infinity, right? I start from one minus two m, some negative integer, all the way up to zero. Then I go from one to infinity, right? This is fine. So into two different sums. Right, the same form, the same inside. And remember, for this sum, I no longer require n not equal to negative m. Because right? the reason I require n not equal to negative m is to make sure that the bottom is non-zero. Right? So, so for this sum, it is necessary. For, but for this sum, I no longer need it. Because for this sum, every, every denominator is strictly positive, right? It's obvious. Right. So remember, for this sum, I don't have 1 over 2m. But for this sum, do I have 1 over 2m? I think so. Right, I do think so. So, so yes, I do have uh, 1 over 2m. Right, because it's... Cause it, uh, it is not concerned with the denominator being zero or whatever. Right, so this is fine. The reason we don't have uh, 1 over 2m for this sum is we started off from this expression, right? This derived from this expression. But this expression is derived from that expression. So that expression tells us that the, in order for the bottom to be non-zero, we have to make sure that m is not equal to n, right? So this is absolutely necessary, but this is not, right? Because this is the, uh, the first sum, right? The first sum, we only require the, that the bottom is non-zero, right? But the bottom is non-zero is already dealt with in this sum already. So this sum, I don't have to worry about it, right? So that for the first sum, for this sum, let's call it sigma 3. Right, let's write, write everything down. Sigma 3 is equal to what? I started off from first term is what? Uh, 1 minus 1 over minus m. Second term, of course, I gradually increase the bottom, 2 minus m, 3 minus m, right? If m was 5, right, then I have negative 4 at the bottom, negative 3 at the bottom, negative 2 at the bottom, right? Uh, up until, so the absolute value of the bottom just keep reducing, but still negative, right? Negative, for example, 1 over 3 plus negative of 1 over 2, for example. Right? Absolute value just keep in de decreasing plus negative 1, right? Like I said, uh, the bottom cannot be 0, right? So negative 1 over 1, right? There's no negative 1 over 0, no. I sk uh, skip that off. Then I have something like 1 over 1. Right, that is one, right? What one over two? One over three, right? So the pattern is that the bottom just keeps increasing. I, I started off from negative integer. Negative integer 
gradually increase one by one, one by one, one by one. Each time I increase it by one unit, right? Until I finally have some positive integers, right? Still keeps increasing. Up until maybe one over uh, n minus three plus one over n minus two, right? Still uh, increasing by one unit, increasing by one unit, increasing by one unit, n minus one. Still positive integer, right? Bigger and bigger at the bottom. And one over n, right? So I end with n equal to zero, right? End with n equal to zero. That means I uh, so one over n, right? That's why I should end. So that, that the, this term can just cancel out with this term, right? and this term can cancel out with this term, right? They happen to be the negative of each other, and this term, this term, right? and of course this term, this term, right? This term and this term, this term, this term, right? And so on and so forth, so on and so forth, right? Except this is the only one that stays. Right? But I'm not done. I'm not done. Remember, I still have this infinite sum. Remember, there's no such term, 1 over 2n, right, in here. But there is such, such term in this sum. And this sum and this sum, they're almost the same, same format, inside, same starting point, same ending point, right? Except, here's the difference, this term is the difference, right? So the only term that survives is this term, right? Everything else is to cancel out, right? So this will survive. That, that, that's the reason we have the... Uh, right, so this is the key. And so the only one that survives is this term and this term, right? Still I have a negative sign. So meaning I have negative of 1 over 2n plus 1 over n. That is negative uh, 3 over 2n, right? That is the result of, of this, of this, of this, right? Sigma 1 is this result, right? Negative 3 over 2n. No. That, that is the result of the whole thing, right? The, the inside, the whole thing. This whole thing is negative 3 over 2n. Right, like I said, yes, like I said, from here, the, this sum, this sum, this sum, this guy survives, and this sum, this sum, and this sum, happens that this guy survives, right? So only survival is this guy, so this whole sum, right? Still have to multiply by the constant. What is that? Negative 3 over 4m squared. Right? That is this result. Negative 3 over 4m squared. Right? But I'm not done. This is only the inside sum, right? Still, the outside sum is what? The outside sum, I can say. Maybe for negative... For, take out the constant. This time, constant is negative 3 over 4. Right, this time, m changes, finally, m changes. It used to be constant, but right now, it's changing, right? Just 1 over m squared, and this is well known. This is the basal problem, right? So this negative 3 over 4 times, what is that? Pi squared over 6, right, if, I, if I remember correctly. That is negative pi squared over 8.